In today's video, we're going to talk about how to run a SQL query in Jenkins. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. You might think that since Jenkins is a Java web application, all that you need to do in order to make a query to a database is to install a JDBC driver and just keep on going. Well, in reality, that is not such a great idea. Why is that? The reason why is that the Jenkins controller was never meant to do that type of work. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the proper way to make queries against a SQL database. Here's where we're starting today. I have a Jenkins controller version 2.277.3. When it was installed, I used the install suggested plugins option in the wizard. To this controller, I've attached an agent with a label of Linux, and I've also installed two CLIs. The first CLI I installed was the MariaDB CLI, and I also installed the JQ CLI. And finally, since I said I installed the MariaDB CLI, that means that we're using MariaDB as our database for today. You might be using another SQL database, such as Microsoft SQL Server, or take your pick. It doesn't matter. Here's the twist. If you're using a NoSQL database, everything that you see today is going to be the exact same scenario for you because there's nothing special about making a query to a database. Right now, we're going to be using the CLI to make the query to our database. One final thing before we get started. Here's our business requirement for today. It's a completely contrived example, but the requirement is we want to make a query to a table in a database using an ISO code for a country, and then we are going to echo out the full country name. Before we actually jump in our controller, I want to take you into the agent where we have the MariaDB client installed, and we're going to run the query that we're going to be using within our job. So since this is MariaDB, the actual command line is MySQL because Maria is based on MySQL. So I'm going to say you, I've already set up this database. I already have a password. And the database I'm connecting to is 192.168.32.11. And we are connecting to the My App database. So now we're logged in and I'm going to query the table that we're going to use and that's select star from countries. And you can see here that we have a table with three rows in it, a row for the US, a row for Germany, and a row for Australia. We're going to use this query that we're looking at right now on the screen as the starting point for our Jenkins file, and then we'll go through a few different variations. Now we can see here, select star from countries, very simple. Let's go back over to our controller and create a job, and we're going to name it query database. This is going to be a pipeline job, and we're going to do everything inside the controller this time. We're not going to use any kind of Git repositories or anything else. I just want you to see the examples of what we're doing today. So what I have here is pipeline agent label Linux. So that's the agent that has our MySQL or MariaDB, however you want to refer to it, CLI. And it also has the CLI for JQ. You'll see why in a few moments. So here is basically the query that we need to run, which is mysql-n. You'll see what that is in just a moment. In fact, we'll run this command. Let's, let's just do that. Let's grab this command and go back over to our CLI and see what happens. Now that we're here in the CLI, let's go and paste that command in because this is the command that we have in our Jenkins file that we're going to be running. So this is the, if I can grab the bar, okay, that's not going to work with me. There we go. This is the command that we are wanting to run from the command line. So let's just run it on the command line. So it's mysql dash n, dash n will suppress the headers, dash u Jenkins, dash p password one, that's the password, which host we're connecting to, which database, and then we have an inline query here. Now I'm using JSON object. This is the reason why that we have JQ installed. 
I could have chosen to do this in a different way, but I chose to use JQ. So I have my query here and I'm saying from countries where ISO equals US. So I'm changing this query to only pull back the data for the US country code. Let's run this. You can see here we don't have a header and we now see a nice clean JSON blob for the US. No problem, this is what we want to do. So let's go back over to our controller, save the job, and let's run it. So we know on the agent, everything is running as expected. In our controller, what we want to do is just run the job and make sure that it runs the command the same way on the agent that we just saw. And we can see here that the output is just this JSON blob, JSON string, whatever you want to call it, is the same as the output that we saw when we ran the command on the command line. So, so far, so good. Now you might be saying to yourself, okay, Darren, I see that it works, so what? I see here though that you're hard coding in your username and password. You're right, I am. So let's change that. The first thing that we need to do is create a credential that we will reuse. So we'll go to here. Let's add a credential. We're going to name the, actually the username is going to be Jenkins. We know that. We know our password is password1. And the ID that we're going to use is MariaDB credentials. We use that for the description as well. And now we need to modify our job. Where is it? There we go. We need to add in an environment block. Grab that here. I could type, but you would get bored. So I have an environment variable that's being loaded from the credentials for MariaDB credentials. And then what we need to do is replace Jenkins and password one with the values from the credentials. So let's do that. So I'm gonna say MariaDB creds USR. If you're not familiar with how these credentials work, because you notice there is no underscore USR, nor is there a MariaDB, whoops, MariaDB creds PSW. If you're not familiar with how credentials turns this environment variable into these two environment variables, go and refer to the credentials documentation on the Jenkins site. It'll explain it all for you. The only thing we've changed so far is we've added an environment variable for MariaDB creds that's pointing at MariaDB credentials. And then we've put in the two different environment variables here to run our query. Let's click on save. And just because I don't remember, let's go take a look and verify the credential is correct. MariaDB credentials, that is correct. Okay, go back to query database. Let's do a build now and let's see what happens here. Okay, still blue. We can see that our user ID and password are being masked out. That's exactly what we want. In fact, it's even telling us that right here. So everything is working. So I have now taken my credential that was hard-coded and I've turned it into a credential within Jenkins. So everything's great, right? Well, in reality, not so much. Why is that? The reason why is that although it looks okay inside of Jenkins, the bigger problem is over on the agent, I am leaking that user ID and password. If somebody was to catch right at the point in time when this command ran and they did a PS on that agent, they would be able to capture the user ID and the password straight from the command line because you would see that process with the ID and the password in the clear. So let's fix this. Next, we're gonna do a little bit of MySQL client magic. So I'm gonna to go to Query Database, Configure, and we're going to change the line that we're running here. And let's go through this line. What I'm doing is I'm echoing out 
a client configuration. So I'm defining the user, the password, the host, and the database. And then I'm taking advantage of one of the options for the MySQL client to use defaults file. So that string that we just created on the front side is standard in. So we're able to pass in our standard in to the client and then it will use that data. So if somebody was to be watching our agent while the process is running, they would not see the username and password in line. So this is a better way of handling the credentials specifically for this use case. Everything else from that point forward is exactly the same as we saw in the previous example. Now there will be a gist, the link to that gist will be below in the description that will have all of these variations of these Jenkins files along with the table definition and the test data that we're using. Let's go ahead and click on save. And let's do a build now. Let's take a look at number three. And we can see here that MySQL defaults file is bringing in standard in. It does echo this out, but it is being masked as we would expect from those variables. And we still receive our standard values for the JSON string. Up to this point, we've only been returning data for the US, but we also have data for other countries. So what we want to be able to do is to be able to enter the country code and then be returned back just the country name. But before we get to that point, I want to enter the country code and just return back the JSON string for that specific country code. So let's go do that. So we'll go back up here to query database, configure. We're going to add a parameter that is the ISO code. Since I only have three rows of data in this table, instead of using a string field, I'm going to use a choice field and just use a dropdown. So we can see here, I've set up the choices for US, Australia, and Germany. We're saying select the ISO code. Now let's use that variable. So the only place we were using US was at the very end of this file. So for US, which is sort of hard to see, it's running off the side there. Let me size that down one. There we go. All right, so now we need to fill in US. But how do we need to do this? Since we are already inside of double quotes and single quotes, we're gonna to have to do some escaping of our quotes. So to do this, I am going to actually remove the two single quotes. I'm going to paste in a triple slash double quote with the ISO code variable or parameter since it is a parameter and then another triple slash double quote on the end. So let's go ahead and click on save and we're gonna do a build now. If you've worked with pipeline at all in the past, you know that the first time you run it with the parameters, it hasn't been set yet. So we just said build, it, it did not know about the parameter at the point I clicked on build now. So it just ran and it was empty this time. So let's go back to query database and build with parameters. Now we have a dropdown for our ISO code. You could have manually gone in and set the parameter, but I chose to just run the job once to get it set up correctly. And now I'm going to use it for real. So I have the US selected, I'm going to click on build. And if we watch it here, we can see that, oh yeah, you selected US and here is our JSON blob. Okay, that was simple. Let's go test one of the others. Let's go run it for Germany. And if we click on build, you can see here for Germany that we have the Germany JSON string. Let's go back to our business requirements. We're wanting to be able to pass in a country code, or in our case, ISO code, and print out the full country name. Since we have JQ installed on our agent, then we're going to be able to easily take that JSON string and parse it using JQ. So let's go do that. We'll click on configure, 
And let's go to the end of the line, which is not rendering correctly. Let's do that. One, two, three. There we go. And let's paste in what we have here, which is after we run the MySQL command, we want to take the output from the MySQL command, pipe it into JQ, and then pull off the country name attribute. So let's go ahead and click on Save. And now let's do a build with parameters and select the Australia ISO code. Click on Build Now or Build. Let's we'll see what happens. Now we can see here that MySQL runs, JQ runs, and we get the output of Australia. Notice what we did not do. We did not install a plugin. We did not put a JDBC driver on our Jenkins controller. We just had a very vanilla install suggested plugins Jenkins controller. On the agent, we had the MariaDB client. It's named MySQL. I know, it's confusing. We also had JQ installed on our agent. And from that point, we were able to create our queries on the agent. We brought them into our Jenkins file. We made some changes with the Jenkins file to handle credentials better. Until finally, we actually had a parameterized job to where we could pass in a code, and then we printed out the full name. Why does this matter? Going back to the opening of this video, the Jenkins controller was never meant to interact directly with a database. In order to provide stability for your Jenkins controller, you should never, and I repeat, never make direct database connections from within your Jenkins controller. Always, always, if you're having to interact with a database, make sure that those database interactions happen on an agent, you can bring the data sets in, process them as you need, and the stability of your Jenkins controller will be much higher. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.